It is time for another professional match of StarCraft 2, and what I got for you today is a Terran vs Zerg played on Proxima Station LE between two of Europe's greatest players. Spawning in the southwest corner, playing with the blue Terran pieces, we have none other than Euthermo. And his opponent spawning in the top right, Necros position, he goes by the nickname of Nurcio. And in this match, and in pretty much all of the matches that you see him play, he's gonna be playing with the drones, he's gonna be playing with the Zerg pieces. Now, Nurture, of course, doesn't really require an introduction at this point. I mean, I've been featuring uh, I've been featuring him many times already on this YouTube channel. The guy is an absolute beast. I love watching him play just because, generally speaking, his early and late game styles are absolutely sublime. Usually, he plays a little bit... Like, I, I love watching him play mostly because he plays super safe and sometimes even a little bit too much so. Apparently, he's also great at typing emojis right there with, with mustaches and you thermal can type uh, poo between brackets, but... Regardless, I mean, I love watching this guy play because for the longest time, I mean, for example, in Zerg vs. Terran, he was the only player really at the professional scene that was opening up with a spawning pool first. I've always, I've always sort of had a vibe with, with Nurcio that he's sacrificing a lot of potential early game economy just because he wants to be safe and just because he knows that he can out macro and out produce his opponents later on into the match. Now, of course, he's not up against a bad player whatsoever. Euthermal, a bio-based Terran player, probably the best in Europe right now. I'm actually trying to think here who could potentially, you know, come against that title as well. I mean, there's a bunch of good Terran players, but I think Euthermal definitely has the crown to, uh, you know, the best Terran in Europe right at this point in time. The guy is an absolute beast as well. I actually recently, just last weekend, went to Euthermal's housewarming party. Um, he also lives in the Netherlands, he lives about an hour ago, or an hour away from my place, and um, yeah, we basically uh, we basically hung out. Uh, he recently moved in with a bunch of other nerds that also play a lot of StarCraft 2, and he's now actually got like a practice, you know, a practice place right around the corner. I mean, it's about an hour of traveling or so, and I, uh, I actually ended up talking to him for quite a while. Really nice dude, and of course, very, very good with the Terran pieces. Now, here's the thing, right? Nurcio is great at defending early game pressure that's very, very conventional. One of the things that I've seen him struggle with in the past, and one of the things that Euthermo is most definitely capable of, is this, like, sort of like unorthodox styles, okay? The most standard strategies right now for Terran do involve either a Hellion-based opener, which seems to be the one that we see right now from Euthermo, but also the 16 Marine drops. And against those kind of styles, I feel like Nurcio is not gonna really be taking a whole lot of damage. However, Euthermo is one of those players that is not afraid to mix it up. Generally speaking, I mean, I've seen him go for like battle cruiser rushes against really high level players, and while that will be very uncommon against someone of the caliber of Nurcio, generally speaking, he's not afraid to go for those kind of styles, and that's sort of what makes him unpredictable here as well. Now, Nurcio, generally speaking, will be focusing on um, Zerklings and Roaches and Ravagers in the earliest stages of the game. Usually, he switches to some Mutaling Bane style a little later, and eventually, he's not afraid to go for that Ultralist tech, and sometimes even Brute Lords, depending on what his opponent is going for. But I would really like to see Nurcio, uh, or rather Euthermal, mix it up a little bit. I mean, maybe go for something that is not quite as common, because I feel like against pretty much all of the conventional openings from the Terran players, Nurcio is just gonna be like an impenetrable wall. Now, of course, it is to be seen here. He does have a tendency to squeeze out a lot of workers in the earlier stages of the game, sometimes a little bit too much so, but usually it's going to be the Terran here that will be deciding the early pace of this game. Queens will be able to shoo away these Hellions for the time being. Two more will be joining here very, very shortly. And we do indeed see that follow-up right now as well. Tech Lab being added on, so very shortly Euthermal can switch out for, for example, a Benchy, but maybe even... A Raven here as well. I'm seeing a lot of gas here already. We'll keep an eye out on that. He could potentially go for that Raven Opera, uh, which has become a little bit more common, but that's the kind of style that I would love to watch him play right now, just because it's something, and there we do indeed see it, that is something that is not quite as common from a Terran player in this matchup. Now, so far, Lair going down, three additional gases being added on. We don't see a Roach Warren or anything just yet. There are quite a few Hellions here already, and two more are just about to join in. These Queens need to be careful. They're already starting to take quite a little bit of damage. Six more drones on the production tap. Of course, there are still a lot of Zerklings here ready to defend as well, but these Queens are slowly starting to take more and more damage. Nice micro here back and forth, though. Both players trying to micro back their weakened units, but this is a, this is a very slippery slope. From playing a lot of Zerk myself, and one of the Hellions does end up falling, for playing a lot of Zerk myself, sometimes you get into these kind of scenarios, your Zerklings get roasted, and all of a sudden the Hellions make their way to the mineral line, and it seems like that's exactly what's happening right here, right now. 
These Hellions, very low in HP, but of course, they are more than capable of keeping up that drone barbecue. Already nine workers do end up falling, and at the same time, we do see that first Raven moving across the map with the second one on the production tab right now as well. And while these Hellions will eventually end up falling, they do not go down without taking a lot of drones with them. 13 drones do end up getting killed. The Viking has been patrolling around these bases for a while too, searching for any kind of potential overlords. Looks like it managed to kill only one thus far. And Euthermal now also is in the main base of his opponent, putting up that auto turret. Auto turrets now actually two-shot these workers, and you can see a lot of damage does get dealt right there as well. And of course, that is only an energy-based kind of ability. You can keep up this harass for a very long amount of time, and Nurture indeed is going to be forced to put up that spire in the earlier stages of the game. Third command center is done right now as well. You thermal did sacrifice some early game research here. Only just now is he starting up the plus one plus one upgrades. But I would say that his early game strategy most definitely paid off. I mean, he's gonna be able to contain the Zerg here for quite a bit of time, and that's you know the kind of style that Nurtio will struggle with. You need to get your early game economy up as a Zerg player. If that's not gonna happen against someone of the caliber of you thermal, you're just not gonna be finding any kind of wiggle room anymore in the later stages of the game, and he knows it. He's He's making non-stop workers right now, and while at this point he's in a bit of a deficit, of course, he's Nurture, and you can see supply-wise, he's still looking very, very healthy, he's even ahead of his opponent, but still, you need to be very careful here, because in just a matter of seconds, this game can be ending right here with just a properly timed dropship. Now, speaking of which, two Medivex are currently in the production tab here as well. They're gonna be coming out here in just a second. Six Mutas are, however, also coming out, and I think that these, um, you know, these Ravens will probably end up falling here very, very shortly. More and more gases being added on, of course. Liquid Thermal uh, did just scout that as well. In case, by the way, you are wondering, I actually asked them last Saturday, um, or I think it was Saturday. Anyway, I asked them last uh, last week uh, why his nickname was Liquid Thermy, and the literal answer for that is just because of the character limit. I mean, he's on Team Liquid, all of the Team Liquid players start their nickname with Liquid. Apparently, you Thermal does not quite fit the character limit right there, which is the best reason to shorten up your nickname to Liquid Thermy, I could imagine. Regardless, though, these Mutas are going to be able to do quite a bit of work. There's actually no defenses in the main right now for you Thermal, and this is the kind of chance that Nurture is looking for. He's going to be able to pick up a lot of worker kills. Of course, these drops are going to be able to contain him, but at the same time, I mean, the Ravens will be able to continue the harass for a little while longer, but they're going to end up paying for this with their lives here in just a little bit. Still, solid harassment going down now at either ends of the map. Marines are stemming forward, but the, you know, the Mutalisks are killing so many workers here. 12 SCVs do end up falling. 13th one being added on. At the same time, though, Marines here trying to make towards, or make their way towards that natural mineral line, and they've done a good job so far. Roach is just about to come out as well, but the non-stop harass here from Nurcio will make this a very, very tough game to hold on to. Very solid play here. Of course, just a couple of missile turrets would have made this you know, a much easier feat to do, but you can see Nurture keeping those units alive for such a long time will be able to pick up a lot of worker kills, microing back and forth, and while eventually, I do imagine all of these Mutas will end up falling, they did not go down without a fight. 18 SCVs do end up getting killed, and actually at the same time on the other end of the map as well, Euthermal ended up killing a total of 25 workers. So really, like, even blows being dealt here. I'm gonna make the assumption that eventually these Ravens will also end up going down. Look at that, 12 kills in total. Now, some of those will indeed be Zerklings, but um, these units are definitely very, very powerful, and... I mean, I wonder how they are going to look in just about a year from now or so. Players are getting much better at figuring out these kind of early game openers. But this is the kind of style that Hugh Thermal really enjoys to play. He's got to keep the constant harassment going. I mean, right now we're 9 minutes into the game. I wouldn't be surprised if we're still fighting like 10 minutes from now, okay? I've seen many games where Terran players like this will be able to keep up the harass non-stop. This will all come down, though, to the corrosive biles, and there are a ton of roaches and ravagers here that will be able to pick up one of these siege tanks with ease. Beautiful biles there by the Zerg player in red. He doesn't really want to engage inside of that siege tank radius, and for the time being, he's going to be able to back off. 
We do see that Bailing Nest now also just now finishing up. There's also the chance here that we see Infestors come out here in just a little bit with that Infestation Pit already up and running. Dropship did get split off here, so they're going to be able to move towards that fourth base location. At the same time, though, beautiful Corrosive Biles will pick up those Siege Tanks and, more importantly, shoo away <clears throat> all of the Terran units that are right there. One of the Marines apparently does get picked off, but the rest of them will be able to get on out of there to drop another day. 11 more workers going down right now. Our Nerd Show desperately trying to scramble up more and more of them. I mean, currently it's 70 or 70 workers against 61. That is the kind of style that you do want to be in as you uh, or if you are the Terran player in this match. I mean, at this point in time, right? Let's have a quick look. He's researching plus two, plus two. He's done a lot of damage to his opponent, but more importantly, he's containing the Zerk as well. Zerk is not really capable of moving out at this point. I think that Nurtio might be looking here to tech up towards the Hive very shortly, but the thing is, it's a very expensive, you know, piece of tech to get to, and while you will be able to get quite a lot of Lair units out as well, once the Terran starts up 3-3 and finishes it as well, and there we do indeed see that research getting started, this becomes a very, very tough match to beat if you are just simply stuck on 2-2 yourself. Now, once again, these Metavex being dropped off into the main as well as into the fort base. Apparently, a few of these Marines will have to try and run towards that Metavex, and eventually, they do indeed get picked off, not without, you know, at least some of them taking a bit of damage. But basically, what Nurture is just trying to do right now is contain his opponent on the basis that he's at. Now, of course... If he is capable of finishing up 3-3 and his opponent is stuck on 2-2, his army will be significantly more powerful. But Euthermal is doing Euthermal things in the sense that it's going to keep on pushing. Of course, you got to be very careful with some properly timed Bane Links and some good connections with those Corrosive Biles and Bane Links. This army could easily end up falling. But there are a ton of Siege Tanks right now. we got sort of like a semi contain at this point in time. I mean, does Euthermal really want to push onward right here, right now? The dropships still trying to do whatever damage they can. Of course, Mutas will be able to intercept those quite easily. Hive Tech does get started up right now as well because Nurtio knows what's going on here. He knows he needs to be careful, but apparently he wants to move in. All of these siege tanks are clumped up together, so that does mean that the corrosive bios can hit several of those at once. Two of them immediately do end up falling. Marines shoving forward to try and do whatever damage they can, but Nurtio overpowering his opponent here. He somehow, some way, managed to clean up the majority of those units preventing really his opponent from containing him but the reinforcements have already arrived the mutas in the top side of the map do end up getting killed there metavex just barely in the nick of time picking up the last of these marines and once again he's continuing onwards but had harassed and exactly that is what Nurtio is, you know, trying to prevent. I mean, we see these missile turret goes up right here at the front of his base. The creep spread has been denied. The gold base cannot be taken at this point. And happily, over at the fort base location here for the Terran player, SCVs are mining right now. And once again, we see that engagement going down. Siege tanks will be able to do a lot of work here from a distance. And this is the kind of fight that is a lot more difficult to take. Mostly Ravagers in this army composition right now. They will be falling behind here and upgrades very very shortly 3-3 is just about to finish up and remember what I said right these fights can last for a very long amount of time because for the last five or so minutes we've been basically seeing non-stop aggression from both of these players trying to keep up with all of these units and somehow some way Nurtio is cleaning that one up that was an absolutely insane fight those are the kind of engagements that are very difficult to take if you are the Zerg player making the decision to shove forward with your Ravagers to try and land the Corrosive Biles but getting some additional hits in from those Siege Tanks can be extremely scary. Now of course the majority of this Zerg army is Roaches and Ravagers right now and that you know that army composition can be a little bit deceiving. I mean sure the supply counts are heavily in favor of Zerg right now but the upgrades are not. 3-3 research is absolutely incredible and you thermal for that very reason and is gonna continue piling on the pressure couple of the Mutas trying to make their way towards that fourth base location. They might be able to pick up a couple of these SCVs here that are indeed building on additional barracks. Dropship now also going down, trying to pull parts of this Zerg force towards the fourth base location so that the rest of the main army can indeed advance onwards here as well. Euthermal though going very far here on the creep. The Corrosive Biles once again will be able to land in between a bunch of these siege tanks and a lot of them will end up paying for that with their lives. Dropship still dealing damage here at the back of the fort base you can see the 3-3 research is doing so much work 
Infestors are now also being added on. The fourth base here, or rather the fifth base of the Zerg, does get slowed down here for the time being. But the longer that Euthermal manages to put on the pressure, the more difficult this is going to be. Eventually, though, Nurture will be able to finish up some Hive upgrades here as well. We do see that Adrenal Research being, uh, being researched right now here in the spawning pool. That is a very, very important upgrade as it makes his Zerglings so much more powerful. However, it looks like Nurture may very well try and move here across the map right at this point in time. Siege tanks, though, on that high ground doing a lot of work. Torching those corrosive vials here with those marines and with some properly timed fungals this could still be anyone's game I mean if somehow some way Nurture can land a fungal in the middle of a group of those marines right the corrosive vials will clean everything up and of course that is now also what you thermal is a little bit worried of he's building himself a missile turret just to sort of like confuse the AI once the fight here inevitably happens he's still piling on the aggression here a lot of additional units now on the production tab here as well and he's also getting up to plus three vehicle attacks here to make those siege tanks even more powerful. Baiting a bunch of these Zerg units towards the siege tanks now as well, just by trying to make all of this happen. But a huge flank did get set up right there by the Zerg player in red, lending those... You know, fungal growths very, very nicely. But once again, I'm starting to wonder here if the upgrades, the upgrades here for the Terran player are just simply not a little bit too high. Supply count somehow, some way went in favor right there of the Zerg player. But still, Terran is pushing onwards, and it's starting to look closer and closer and closer. And apparently, Nurcio wasn't feeling that one, and eventually he decides to tap out. Whew! That was a very long. A very aggressive fight there after like the 8 minute mark. I feel like all of that was sort of the result though from the early game. I mean, keep in mind, a lot of workers were lost here to just a bunch of Hellions. And while, you know, Nurture managed to move across the map as well with those Mutas and ended up picking up quite a few of these SCV kills. And of course, Euthermal could have defended against that a little bit better as well. But I mean... Still, he was forced to remake a lot of those workers in the earlier stages of the game, and Euthermal just did not give away that advantage. Even though the supply counts were looking very, very scary there for just a bit, 3-3 upgrades for the Terran pieces, and in particular for the bio units, is just absolutely incredible. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. If you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get a notification as soon as I upload more. And other than that, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, alright? And I'll see you in the next one.